So you know how they say that uh, truth is stranger than fiction. And uh, today, ladies and gentlemen, is no exception because we are here to pick up that car again for the second or third time. I've, I've lost count. It's quite a few times. If you would ask me what three, four months ago, if I would ever be sitting in this car again, I would have said not a chance. And yet here we are today. Just picked up the car, heading back to uh, back home with it. And it is, it's, it's a bizarre feeling to be back in this car. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought we'd sold it for good. And yet, it's back. It's kind of a surreal feeling to be back in this little Tiger Type R again, or in Tiger Type R clone, I should say. Um, once you sell a car, you don't usually expect that you'll see it back again. But, yeah, here we are. Um, heading back, uh, back home. So, the person that bought it back in early the spring, 2023, uh, that we drove it down to, uh, he's put some parts on this car, um, some, some nice ones. There's a uh, new muffler on, I think it's a spoon muffler, and he's put uh, new lug nuts, like, skunk two uh, lug nuts on, and he did a full valve job, like a valve adjustment, valve seals. A new, uh, you can see here a new Sparco steering wheel, a new shift knob, a new head unit, the Apple CarPlay. Oh, and there's just a, there was originally just a regular Integra um, trim piece here. He found a carbon fiber one and stuck that in. So you know a bunch of some little things, and he tinted the windows. The windows are darker, and so um, he, he put some nice parts on this car. Um, I will say, it's it's a little bizarre hopping back into this car again, especially after driving. A, a real type, like a factory type R, the white one. Because um, you can tell, again, immediately, this shifter is super tight. And, of course, the clutch is just a beast. It's about an inch engagement off the floor. And it's a, it's, it makes it so <laughs> you kind of have to wrestle with this car a little bit more than just, you know, fluidly driving it along. And uh, the steering wheel, I can't say I'm a huge fan of, but it, you know, everybody has their own sort of taste to it. I suspect it's going to come back off as soon as it gets back to uh, his collection. He's going to return it. Some of it back to stock, but some of it I think he's going to keep modified. Um, and this might be the only modified car he owns, which is a little eclectic in a, in a, in a collection that's almost entirely stock. And I feel like there's a hole or a leak in the exhaust system someplace. And I don't just mean the new muffler, which is noticeably louder. With the, and there's DC sports headers on here too, of course. But there's something when you hit right about 5,000 RPM and you have the your foot down. Yeah, it opens up so hard that the entire car, there's a blatting noise and the entire car sort of stumbles or hesitates. Almost like it's, yeah, it's, it's noticing that there's too much exhaust leak going on. So the whole thing is kind of boomy and loud, uh, if anything. Like I'd, if it's from my car, I think I'd want it a little bit quieter because you get enough booming noise going on and it just makes driving anywhere almost unbearable. But that, again, that's just my taste, that's just me. Um, overall though, this car remains uh, incredibly fun to drive. Even though it's not a regular, an actual factory type car, it is a clone, it's a very nicely done one. But you can feel a little bit of the, you can hear and sense some of the differences from an actual factory type car. Like with this header, the engine sound itself is louder, but this car still has most of the sound deadening that you'd get in a normal Integra. So the factory one doesn't have all that sound deadening. So it's, it's just the difference of that one. It's the, on this one, the engine's louder, but on that one, you can hear more like wind and road noise. So yeah, it's, it's kind of a different sort of experience of the same basic car. And it'll be interesting to see these two side by side you know, drive them back to back and see them next to each other in the collection. One's kind of a, a clone that's also modified with aftermarket parts, and then one is, is bone stock and and will likely always always remain that way. So we're gonna pedal this thing back up the road, back up to home. It's starting to rain again a little bit, but yeah, this <laughs> I'm kind of glad that we're not driving this car too much further because, like I say, this exhaust this exhaust. I'll rev it up a little here. Yeah, you can hear that. It's so loud. It actually pulls power back from the car. And yeah, it, <laughs> I can see where 
you would want to drive it that way for too, too awful long, but we got maybe an hour or two on the road here, and it's not that bad. And, um, and it's just a, it's a fun car to drive. Even with that, it's still, you get the type car experience. It is a lot of fun to drive as a car. So, onwards. One thing I will say, though, is that this car has the brakes off an F1 car, because when you hit Oh, oh it will throw you through that windshield. back home. The yellow bird has returned. Kind of a strange twist of fate. So now I'm in the white Type R, the original the actual factory Type R, and that's the clone we just brought back and we're gonna do a quick little comparison drive just to see what the differences are and the similarities are and I can already tell. Like you, you when you get into a, something like a Type R, you think, okay, this is going to be super hardcore track car only. You think the controls are going to be super stiff and tight and hard to use, and it's not really. This shifter, honestly, this could have come out of like an Accord or a, a Prelude or something. It's just, it's the easiest shifter in the world. The clutch, the same thing. Could have come from a Civic even. Very light, very easy to use. The steering is... It's, it's direct and it's immediate and it's quick for sure, but it's nothing more intense than you'd find in just about any other Honda of the period. So that's why to me, this, this Type R will, even though I love that yellow color to death and it's, I kind of like its character and the way that it's trying to kill you half the time. But if I had to drive a car for a while of the two, I'd pick this one. I'd pick the factory Type R. But so we're gonna take it around our little loop and see what's what. Can really feel the difference in something like the clutch because like i mentioned before that clutch is super stiff and the engagement's all the way down at the bottom inch or so of the travel of the car so you have to be ready in that car when you start lifting that clutch off the ground about an inch you already start having to feed in throttle to keep it from stalling otherwise it will conk out on you and you have to be ready for that it's a car you can't you can't really drive without thinking about it or focusing whereas something like this is the regular factory type r the clutch is like a normal honda clutch where the engagement's all the way at the top you got plenty of time to be ready for it. And you can kind of just drive it without thinking about it. You can drive this like you could drive a, a Civic or a, a, any other car, really. It's not intimidating at all to drive. That's what a normal, what a normal Type R sounds like. That's much more like it. Here you go, this runs without exhaust. Here I go with my factory exhaust. and 
course, the general public, too, must have thought when this thing came out, like, what in the world? The way this front end grabs and turns in is like a water skier. It is just like it has the reflexes of a house fly. And that engine, man. Oh, there it is. That's the scream. It screams. Suspension, fantastic. The steering, otherworldly. Brakes, excellent. The controls are all so light. Just flip this thing around. Go kart. So yeah, it's the, the, this car has has some some magic to it for sure. I'll love it to death. It's a special car. They're both special cars. Love them both.